Praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study. All of our home folks that are here in service with us tonight, we want you to know how much we appreciate you being here. I know you hear that every Wednesday night, but I just can't help but let you know how good it is to see your smiling faces. Somebody say, praise the Lord. I, well, I appreciate that, brother. That's why I like having you here. You're one of the few that tells me that, and I just appreciate that so very much. And all of our friends and followers and family that are joining us on Facebook, uh, we want you to know how much we appreciate you being here with us as well. And everyone said amen. Before we get started tonight, there are just a couple of things that I want to, uh, I want to go over. Uh, I want to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to hear these. First is, uh, today is November the 18th, and November the 18th is a very special day because that is my beautiful bride's birthday. And I am so glad that she is here to share another birthday with us. She's 23 this year. And, uh, <laughs> amen. We uh, are so thankful that, uh, that she is a part of this family. I know I'm very thankful she's a part of our family. Um, I could go on and on about the contributions that she makes on a daily basis and sacrifices she makes. <laughs> Those on Facebook, she's egging me on. Uh, but it is just true, and uh, we celebrate this day with her. We're going to do a little more celebrating this weekend, but... Uh, I just wanted to make mention that it is her birthday. If you haven't had an opportunity to tell her happy birthday, make sure that you do that uh, before service is over. Uh, the second thing is our ministers in training, uh, our, our fifth installment, or sixth installment, is this Saturday, 10 a.m. at the church. Uh, if you've not been a part of that, but you want to be a part in that, uh, of that moving forward, we, we've got a lot of catching up to do, which means we need to meet before you jump into that. Uh, but if that's something that you're after, something that you want to partake in, uh, please meet with me as soon as possible. Uh, after the next month, after December, uh, you'll have to wait until we start a, a new segment of that because we'll just be too far into it uh, to catch up in a, in a couple of private sessions. So, uh, And then the, th the third thing and final thing is something that is very, very serious, uh, and I just wanted to reiterate. I, I, I want to tell this church how thankful I am that you've been so conscious of wearing your masks into the building, out of the building, and anytime you're up and talking to someone, you have your masks on. Um, we have in Jefferson County, uh, as well as across the state and across the United States and even throughout the world, have seen a huge uptick in cases. Uh, and I don't know how many of you, I know there are some here that have been affected directly by it. You've had family members affected directly by it. Uh, I will say personally, I've had family uh, that have been, very, have been hit very hard with it. I've had some very good friends. Uh, that have lost their life to it. Uh, and I have some very good friends that are actually fighting against it right now. And I know that there are people on both ends of the spectrum, and I am not here to, to, bait, to debate which side is right. Uh, I'm not a scientist, uh, and I'm not a politician. Uh, I do believe that, that God gives us, he gives us common sense, number one, and, and, and he also encourages us uh, not to be a stumbling block to anyone, to be a good neighbor, uh, and to present ourselves in, in a fashion that is uh, not just acceptable, but is an encouragement to those around us. And so I, I, I just wanted to let everyone know as we move forward, we, are, it's gonna have to, we, we really have to do our diligence in making sure that we wear our masks uh, in and out of the building. Uh, if you're up talking with someone, please uh, have your mask on. I know we've got a number of people uh, that are wearing their masks through the entire service. At this point, I'm not asking everyone to do that, uh, but I want you to know there are a number of people that are concerned. Uh, the other thing is, is we've already we've already talked to uh, our our guest relations committee, our our door greeters, and those that are helping uh, folks be seated. That moving forward, if someone is up around talking to other people without their mask on, or or walking around without their mask on, they are going to very politely ask you please go put your mask on. It is imperative. As a matter of fact, um, if, if we can't follow those rules, we're going to have to look at how we move forward within in-person services. And I don't know about you, but uh, there's nothing like having this opportunity. I, I, I think that uh, it's worth it uh, for us to go through just a, uh, a little bit of time of making sure that we're extending that courtesy to one another. Uh, also, we're asking that moving forward prayer if we're, if, you've, if we're praying with people uh, outside of the ministry, 
Um, I, I would ask you to stay with your families or stay with the people that you came with. Uh, and I, I don't want to paint a dire picture tonight, but again, it's very serious. And I just, I know that I speak for David and I know I speak for myself uh, tonight when I say that uh, we don't want anyone in here uh, to transfer anything or to receive anything that could be harmful to your health. And we want to do everything that we can to protect that. Um, so we're asking you, please uh, be mindful of that as we move forward in services. And everyone said, Amen. Everybody say, Happy birthday, Jonna. Happy 23rd birthday. She's catching up with Sue. We celebrated Sue's 29th a, a few weeks ago. <laughs> I think they're both going to hold about right there. Uh, amen. Amen. Uh, it, it's customary for us to go to the Lord in prayer at the beginning of our services on Wednesday nights. And uh, we, we have several requests that we want to make mention of. But I am encouraged tonight. We have just two outstanding uh, praise reports. The first is we were praying for a 14-year-old young man, 15 years old, 14, 15 Miles uh, was his name. Uh, we've been praying for him. We talked about him over the last couple of weeks. He's experienced a lot of heart issues, has had uh, heart surgeries multiple times. And two days ago, he had open heart surgery. And today, they let him come home. And uh, Andy sent us a message earlier today. Amen. Andy sent us a message today that said they, are, they were referring to him as Iron Man in the hospital, astounded that his body was doing what it was doing, and it was reacting the way it was reacting, and it is unheard of for anybody to be released to come home this soon after that kind of a surgery. Now, I appreciate the reference to a superhero, but I think all of us here tonight know exactly why Miles is experiencing and feeling what he's feeling and it's because God is doing a great work. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. I, I uh, had a phone call a couple of times this week with Frank Ferry. He, he called or he messaged us during service on Sunday uh, asking that the church have special prayer. And many of you were still here, I believe, when we had special prayer at the end on Facebook Live. They were not actually able to stream that to her until Monday at about 10 a.m. And uh, the nurse took uh, a device in there, and she watched that prayer. And uh, Frank told me that it had been days since he had been able to communicate with her. He said, but 45 minutes after that happened, his phone rang, and he's like, I don't recognize this number. And he picked it up, and it was mom. And, and he said his mom just talked a, a 100 miles an hour, and it's the first time he's heard her voice in days. She immediately felt the peace and the power of the presence of the Lord. Could we give God praise tonight for these two things? God, we praise you. Thank you for touching Miles, and thank you for touching Jody. God, we praise you tonight. You are a healer. You're a mighty God. You are worthy to be praised. Blessed be your name. You're worthy, Lord. Hallelujah to his name. Isn't God good? Hallelujah. Her, her vitals were under more control, her breathing, all of those things under more control, and they were very encouraged about the turn that she was taking. As a matter of fact, he said, he said one of the first things she asked for was a Coke. It's her favorite thing to drink, and she hadn't been able to drink anything in a long time. God is doing great things. Amen? Isn't that encouraging tonight? Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. I don't know about you, but I'm encouraged tonight as we lift up the rest of these needs. We, of course, still want to pray for Miles, and we still want to pray for Jody. Uh, we also want to continue to pray for Ron Houseworth, that he would do uh, a great work. We want to pray for Brandon Pendergrass, ask that the Lord would continue to do a work in his life. Uh, we also want to remember uh, Brother Denny Robinson's daughters, Brandy and Stephanie. Uh, please remember to lift them up in prayer. Brandy, that God would just continue to do the work that he's done in her life and Stephanie as she goes through this pregnancy that, that God would keep her and the child safe and that nothing would go wonky on them and uh, they would just all make it through that process uh, unharmed and healthy. Amen. I uh, also ask you to continue to remember my father-in-law, John Gieselman, fighting with a number of things in his body uh, and then would also ask my mother-in-law, uh, add my mother-in-law, Susan Gieselman, to that. Uh, we found out some stuff this week that we're praying God would heal her of. And uh, I know that she's, her faith is very high right now. 
Uh, we want to ask that, uh, that God would touch her in a powerful way. If you'll agree with that with me tonight, say amen. We want to continue to rem- remember Vicki. I think Brother Chris gave us an update on Vicki. Uh, she's had a little bit of regression, uh, but we want to pray, lift her up, and pray that God would turn that around. Al Nash, Diane, and Sarah, all of them battling with cancer. We want to pray that God would move in their life in Jesus' name. Amen. And then a good friend of ours uh, reached out to us yesterday. His wife, uh, they go to the church in Florida. Her name's Dick, Dixie Kretzinger. Uh, is, is, she has had and been battling with COVID, was in the hospital uh, for a, a length of time once dealing with that. And just in the past two days, I think, has been readmitted uh, with issues in her lungs. As a matter of fact, I think she has a blood clot. She has a blood clot and double pneumonia. It's a very serious situation. She's younger than I am, uh, much younger than I am, has uh, three children. And we just want to pray and ask that God would be with her. She has four children. We want to pray that God would be with her and her family, give them strength and heal her. Amen? I want us to continue to pray for revival. I, I, I know that's something that we mention almost every time we pray, but I want you to know it's not going anywhere. And we're not praying that God would send revival. We we're praying that God keeps revival happening. Amen? Amen. We also have a special unspoken tonight. I'm not going to mention their name at their request, but they're battling with arthritis. Can I just get three people to raise their hand that will agree with me to pray in faith? that they're, Well, there's more than three. God's going to heal that and touch it tonight. Amen? I also want to ask you to pray for love, that God would saturate Uh, our community, us, uh, everything around us, our world, our nation with love. We need it. Amen. We need to feel the love and the presence of the Lord. I wonder if you would stand with us tonight if you're able to. And uh, I'd invite you to use that outdoor voice. Uh, This is an apostolic church. And uh, we get excited from time to time. We also, we get very excited when we go to the Lord in prayer because we know not only is he able, but he's willing. He wants to do it. Amen? Would you lift that voice and pray with us tonight? God, we're so thankful for the testimony of Miles tonight, that he he got to come home today. What an incredible, incredible testimony of your power and your strength and your oversight. God, I pray in your name that you would continue, continue the rapid healing of his body, continue to amaze the physicians and the medical staff as you repair that heart in Jesus' name. Lord, we're thankful for the testimony of Jody Fair today. On Monday, when they opened up Facebook, she could feel the power of your spirit rush in as she heard this church praying and faith believing that there would be a miracle, a miraculous healing in her body. God, we're thankful for the good report, and we're believing right now together. Would you believe with me? We're believing right now that you're going to complete the work, that you're going to wipe this disease out of her body, out of her lungs, and that you're going to just completely make her whole. God, we lift up Ron Houseworth tonight, dealing with all kinds of issues in his body. We pray together in the name of Jesus, asking that you would touch him. Lord, every cell in his body, let it experience the miraculous healing virtue coming from heaven in Jesus' name. Lord, we continue to pray for Brandon Pendergrass. We know, Lord, that your hand has been on him, that your hand has been with him and his family. Lord, we pray for complete healing for this young man. In the name of the Lord, restore his health, we pray. God, we're thankful for the touch on Brandy, and we're thankful, Lord, for your touch on Stephanie. We're thankful, Lord Jesus, that you've been with these two young ladies as much and as long and as strong as you have. But we pray, Lord, that you would continue the work and continue to complete the work that you started in Brandy's life and in her body, in her mind, and in her spirit. Lord, continue your hand of protection on Stephanie tonight and this child that she's with. Lord, we pray. We've been praying for weeks and we're trusting you. We we saw it, Lord, with, uh, with Asia's sister uh, not too long ago, that how prayer kept her and her child safe from just an extraordinary amount of time. We pray and ask that you do the same with Stephanie and with her child in Jesus' name. Lord, we lift up John Gieselman tonight, asking, Lord, from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. Lord, that you
you would send your healing virtue and take that disease out of his body. Restore his strength in Jesus' name. Lord, let him feel better than he's felt in years. Right now, would somebody believe with me? Would you have right now faith? God, in your name, heal him. Right now, we pray in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for Susan tonight. We lift her up asking in faith, believing that you would heal her body. Lord, you know and understand this situation greater than we could ever articulate it anyway. So, Lord, we offer her up to you asking right now that you would complete the work. We believed, Lord, when we prayed on Monday that the healing power began. We felt the power of your spirit begin to move. Lord, I pray right now in the name that is above every name that you complete the work, that you give her strength, you give her confidence, that you touch her mind and give her peace and victory. Lord, we continue to lift up Vicki and Al Nash and Diane and Sarah, all of them battling with cancer. Lord, you've already shown yourself strong. God, you've already proved that you're in charge. It doesn't matter what the doctor says. It doesn't matter what the radiologist says. It doesn't matter what the CT scan says. All that matters is what you say. And Lord, in the face of all kinds of odds, you've stepped into every one of these situations and you have made ways where man has said it is impossible to find a way. God, we pray right now that you would release your power and continue the work in their body in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for Dixie Crutzinger tonight battling COVID in the hospital on a second stint of blood clot, Lord, in or near her lungs and, and, and other issues going on in her body. Lord, right now, we pray that the divine energy and power of the Holy Ghost would be released in that hospital room. Lord, we prayed for it on Sunday when we prayed for Jody, but I pray the power of the Holy Ghost be so strong in that room that the four walls and the door of that room would not be able to contain it. Lord, we'd be all right with a report and a testimony that the healing virtue of Christ made a surge throughout that entire hospital and people that have been battling heart disease and heart attacks and cancer and COVID and all kinds of other afflictions would just suddenly automatically be healed by the unbridled power of your spirit. Let it be done. In Jesus' name we pray. And Lord, one of our saints tonight battling with arthritis, Lord, we lift them up to you in faith believing. Come on, somebody extend your faith. Raise your voice right now to the King of Kings. Lord, I pray right now in Jesus' name, like lightning, I pray the Holy Ghost shoot through this body and I pray in your name, break up every ounce of pain in the name of Jesus Christ. Arthritis, we come against you in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind you up and cast you out. I rebuke you from this body in Jesus' name, standing upon the authority and the power of the word of God in Jesus' name. Somebody say in Jesus' name. Lord, we're thankful for the outpouring of your spirit, for a revival spirit, for a spirit of revival that, that it has not been easy for us to leave or walk away from. I'm, I'm thankful, Lord, for an expectancy, an expectant spirit every time we come to service on Wednesday night and, and Sunday morning. There is an expectation that your power is going to be here and that you are going to work a mighty work. God, don't let it go. We're praying and don't let it leave us. Let revival linger on. Let it linger on, not just for us corporately, but God, I pray for revival to linger on in every man, every woman, and every child's heart and life. Every step we take, I pray, let it be anointed with the power of your spirit working in us. And Lord, last but not least, we pray tonight for love. We pray for a spirit of love. You said, Lord, that we're to love you with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength, that that was the first and the greatest commandment. But the second commandment is like unto the first, that we should love our neighbors as ourselves. God, if this country, if this city, if this body, if us as individuals need anything, it is a saturation of love. God, I don't know what anybody else 
else is praying for. I don't know what anyone else is seeking. But right now, I want you to know that the saints of Landmark Church are asking for a spirit of love. Saturate us, Lord. I pray, Lord, overflow us with it. Let your love splash off of us everywhere we go. Every store we go into, every job, Lord, that we walk into, every step that we take, every word that we speak, let it be spoken. Let it be stepped, I pray, in love, in the love of Jesus Christ. In the name that is above every name, we pray. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we want you to know we're not here just to ask of you. We're not here just to ask you to do things for us. But we're also here to lift you up and acknowledge you for who you are. You are the great God. You are the holy God. You are the almighty God. You are the king of kings and the Lord of Lords. God, we praise you in this building tonight. We magnify you in this building tonight. We glorify you in this place, in this service tonight. For you truly are great and greatly to be praised. God, I thank you for every healing. I thank you for every deliverance. I, I thank you for every vision and every direction. I thank you for every ounce of love and encouragement and peace and joy that is going to be testified about coming out of this prayer service. We give you praise. Could we do that together right now? Would you just love him together right now? God, we praise you. We praise you in this place. We love you in this place. We magnify you in this place. Come on, somebody, would you lift him up? Come on, somebody, lift him up just for a moment. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. One more time. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Sister Jonna, we're so happy to wish you and join in this happy birthday. Amen? Amen. Let's give her a hand again tonight. Amen. I'll let you be seated. Can you say thank you? Thank you. All right. <laughs> I want to speak to us tonight something I feel the Lord's laid on my heart that I desperately need in my life, and I want to share it with you and this church family tonight, you that are viewing online. The thought and the theme tonight, I, to know Jesus and to make him known. Amen? I want to know Jesus in relationship more than I've ever known him. I feel it's important, it's necessary that I do this. That I no longer just accept the revelation that he's given me, but that I simply pursue the heart of God. The right. psalmist said, you know, as the heart panteth after the water brook, so panneth my soul after the old God. Yes. I want that kind of desire. Yes. It's very, in our culture and in our society that we live, quite often a common statement is when someone asks us if we know so-and-so, a lot of times we say yes. And so often we know so little about them. Right. You know, if we know their name or if we've met them before, we will quite often say, yes, I know them. When you can know a lot about a person and never know about know the person. This is about Jesus. You can have a head knowledge of Jesus and never know Jesus. There are people that know more of the written word of God than I know. And the probably most of us in here know. But they don't know Jesus. And the most important thing tonight is my life and yours. I want to know Jesus. Can you say amen? amen? Jeremiah chapter 9 verses 23 and 24. And Tad says he's ready and he's got it. Thank you. Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might, let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth, let him that glorieth, glory in this, that he understand and knoweth me. That I am the Lord which exercised loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. Amen. Amen. 
It's so easy for wisdom and it's so easy for authority and wealth to impress us. Sue and I used to watch a lot of documentaries and one I still enjoy, The Universe. Why I enjoy seeing the universe and why it's so appealing to me is the Lord said thousands of years ago, let there be. And scientists confirmed in those knowledgeable in astronomy and whatever concerning the universe say the universe is still expanding. That's the power of God's word. Let it be. Oh, can you feel him speaking? Let it be in us. Positions of authority, I used to be so honored when my brother received a birthday card every year from the president. I was, it just made me feel good that here's a guy who hadn't finished high school. Whoops, I shouldn't maybe say that. You know, knew some of the higher rollers, any man, and worldly wealth. One of these days, it's all going to count as nothing. Knowledge is going to fail. Our wealth is going to canker. And positions of authority, we're going to all kneel before the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. Amen. And we're going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Can you say amen? amen? Psalms 51, 16 and 17. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offerings. For the, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. Hallelujah. Just all we got to do is come humbly before the Lord. Amen. Exodus 33 and 13. Now, therefore, I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show, shew me now thy way that I may know thee that I may find grace in thy sight and consider that this nation is thy people. Hallelujah. Verse 18, and he said, I beseech thee, Moses speaking, shew me thy glory. (laughs) Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. James 4 and 6 says, but he giveth more grace. Can you say more grace? grace? One revelation that I had just within probably the last year however much grace it took me to, that led me to repentance to dedicate my life to the Lord, I realize that I need more grace to finish the course. Amen. Grace isn't just a one-time thing. It's a daily thing. Amen. Grace and mercy, they got to follow us. Amen. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but he giveth grace unto the humble. Jeremiah 29, 11 and 13. The Lord speaking, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. Amen. Amen. All of my heart. Thank you, Lord. Ephesians 1 and 17. Here's Paul's prayer. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Amen. We want to know Jesus. The Message Bible, I, I like this. It says, I ask the God of our Master Jesus Christ, the God of glory, to make you intelligent and discerning in knowing him personally. That your your eyes focused and clear so that you can see exactly what it is he is calling you to do. Grasp the immensity of this glorious way of life he has for his followers. Can I back up and repeat that? That we grasp the immensity of this glorious way of life he has for his followers. Amen? Amen. Have you tasted of the Lord and see that he is good? Amen? Amen. Oh, that the utter extravagance of his work in us who trust him. I like that. The utter extravagance of his work in us who trust him. Endless energy. Hallelujah. Boundless strength. (laughs) Amen. 1 Corinthians 2 and 2. 
for I am, the apostle writing, for I am determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. A man that had written some 13 books of the Bible, thoroughly knew the law in every shape and every form. I just want to know Jesus. That's where it begins, and I want to tell you something, that's where it's got to stay. It's got to, st because in the cross is all about the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ in our life. Amen? Yes. So we, we want to honor the cross. We want to, every day that we stop and think, the cross represents what he went through for you and I. How he purchased our salvation. Amen? Yes. The, at the Message Bible says, you'll remember, friends, that when I first came to you to let you in on God's master stroke, I didn't try to impress you with polished speeches and the latest philosophy. I deliberately kept it plain and simple. First Jesus and who he is. <laughs> then Jesus and what he did. So often we try to steal some of his glory, some not intentionally, some possibly. But so often we want to sometimes express what he's done through us. Let's back off of that and let's just first Jesus and who he is and Jesus, what he did. Amen? Amen? Jesus crucified. Can you see that? Jesus crucified. Amen. And boy, if he's crucified and we're living that, he's also crucifying us. Amen? Amen. Okay, Philippians 3, 7 through 10. But what, th but what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but lost for the excellency right of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. The excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but lost. Sorry. And be found in him not having my own righteousness, which is of the law but that which is through faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him. Here's this theme. The power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death. Yes. Hallelujah. Hebrews 7, I'm sorry, Hebrews chapter 3, 7 through 13. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation, in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years. Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation and said, they do always err in their hearts, and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Take heed, brethren lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Yes. But exhort one another daily. Amen. While it's called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. When we stop and think, or when I stop and think, I've said numerous times, had I lived during that time and seen the miracles of God, I would have had faith. If it had been a disciple and walked with Jesus, I would have had faith. Not necessarily. Amen. So often what we see and what we know doesn't draw us closer to Jesus Christ. Yes, God help us to seek him a relationship like we've never sought him before. When we talk about the children of Israel, we, we all know about the children that have learned about the plagues of Egypt. We know about the parting of the Red Sea and walking through on dry ground. Can you imagine over a million people, possibly counting women and children, possibly I've heard as high as three million, and a cloud by day that protected them from the desert sun and a pillar of fire by night to keep them warm. Food and water for over a million people and their animals. Water from a rock, and the Apostle Paul tells us that rock was Christ. Can you imagine carrying a rock? that flowed the water in. Oh, my. Clothes and shoes that grew for their children. Huh. Now, 
I have problems with my clothes shrinking. I wish I could be blessed with clothes that grew. I bought shirts with stretch collars. I bought trousers with stretch waist. Boy, I got a can I give it get a, get a hallelujah out of that? <laughs> but can you imagine children's shoes grew as they grew, and their clothes grew as they grew. Who would ever doubt God? But out of the mass horde of those above 20 years of age, everyone did but two people. Two people had a relationship with the Lord that done all that. Every day. I forget, at one time I heard how many millions of birds there were when they desired quail. The acreage and the, the large parcel of land that they covered. Can you imagine? Everything they needed, God provided. And yet they couldn't believe him. Doesn't Jesus promise to us the same thing? If we just cast all of our cares upon him, yeah. huh? won't he provide? Amen. Forty years of manna, two men made it. Miracles and gifts many times don't create a relationship. Yeah. We're attracted to them. We enjoy seeing them, and I want to see them. And the Lord has used miracles in the early church through the apostles and through the church to bring people in. But it don't end there. It doesn't end with that. It, we we got to go, grow in him and mature in him, grow in relationship. I want to fast forward to the New Testament. Jesus simply went to those disciples and said, follow me. They forsook all. All the miracles, starting at the wedding of Cana, they saw demons cast out. They saw every type of sickness and disease healed. They saw the feeding of the thousands. They were at Mount Transfiguration. Peter, James, and John were when the Lord's countenance was changed. And they saw him as the God of heaven. They s Peter walked on water. His last miracle, I think, was when Jesus restored the priest's ear that Peter had severed with a sword when they came to arrest Jesus. Peter, while he was experiencing all these things, he could easily say, Lord, I'll go to prison with you. Lord, I'll die for you. It's easy to be bold, isn't it? And I've been guilty when we're on the mountain. But sometimes when we've got to come down from that side. Kind of fast forward to a little bit more. The Last Supper ended up in strife. Who's the greatest? <laughs> Who's the greatest? Jesus was no longer the priority. Who became number one in his stead was what the priority is because all the disciples got in disagreement over that. From there it just continued downhill. Then all of them fled. Peter denied him three times. Peter was asked three times by the Lord, Peter, lovest thou me? Peter answered each time, Lord, I love you like a friend not agape as the Lord was asking him do you love me with all your heart soul my I just love you as a friend when Jesus asked him that the third time Peter was grieved I think his heart was pricked and here's what he said thou knowest all things you got to just be honest with God Peter acknowledged all I love you is just like a friend after three years to three and a half years with the Lord in discipleship and being mentored. We're just friends. I want to tell you something. He wants us to be more than friends tonight. And I think we want to be more than friends tonight, don't you? Oh, thank you. P Jesus said to Peter, said, now, Peter, when you're converted, strengthen the brethren. Peter, it, you, that word in the Greek means to return to an earlier stage of development is what the word translated converted means. Peter had to return to back like he started, follow me. <laughs> I'll make you fishers of men. Hallelujah. Amen. Do some of us want to return back? Do we want to really return back to places that we've experienced in Christ n in relationship? Huh? I, I, I've got to be honest. I've got to be honest. I let too many things affect me. I want to tell you something. When I first came to know the Lord 
my most important thing of an evening when I got off work and before I went to bed was getting in the Word. Amen. And sometimes I'm too tired to get in the Word, I say. I want to tell you what else the Lord's leading me to. I, to reread all the Gospels and to gain a perspective of relationship with Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen? Amen? If you want to join in with that, I'll be glad to include you. Lord, help me. Help me to read those Gospels and to know you and get a greater revelation of who you are and what you are and deepen my relationship with me. Hallelujah. So what happened? The Apostle Peter, his heart was pricked. He repented. He went back to just follow me. Hallelujah. And he became a mighty man of God. Mighty man of God. I have two or three scriptures that I don't enjoy reading. I'd rather be my choice. I wouldn't read them to you. But it's Bible. Amen. Matthew seven twenty one through 23. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have we cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Horribly sad words. This is a picture of professing Christians. The Message Bible says it this way. Knowing the correct password, saying master, master, for instance, isn't going to get you anywhere with me. What is required is serious obedience. Yeah. Doing what my Father wills. I can see it now at the final judgment. Thousands strutting up to me and saying, Master, we preached the message. We bashed the demons. Our God-sponsored projects have everyone talking. And do you know what I'm going to say? You missed the boat. Yeah. All of you did use me to make yourselves important. You didn't impress me one bit. You're out of here. Can you imagine the sadness and the grief? But that's the words of our Lord and Savior. Revelation 3.20, another very sad one. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. That's relationship. What a picture. But the last church age, the church of Laodicea, the Lord isn't in the building. He's out of the building. The Message Bible says, look at me, I stand at the door, I knock. If you hear me call and open the door, I'll come right in and sit down to supper with you. Yeah. Conquerors will sit alongside of me at the head table, just as I, having conquered, took the place of honor at the side of my Father. That's my gift to the conquerors. Hallelujah. Amen. Here's some random thoughts that are the results possible of knowing Jesus. Number one, we'll, we'll become more like him. Hmm. Paul said, I'm not going to quit praying for you, I believe, to the Galatians, till Christ is formed in you. You're going to develop characteristics and attitudes and thoughts like he did, amen? amen. Paul, writing in 2 Corinthians 3.18, said, we all, when open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Point two, the greater the revelation we have of who God is, the less likely we'll want to touch His glory and give it to ourselves or anyone else. As we see Him, as He is. Point three, the more we know God and understand His way, the easier serving him becomes. <laughs> living haphazardly, it's a tough life. It's a tough way to live. But living close to him is so much sweeter and so much better. The more we know him and understand his ways, the more he'll create opportunities for us to make him known. Do you believe that? <laughs> oh, Daniel... 11, 32, and 33, the last part of the verse. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. 
and they that understand among the people shall instruct many. Yes. Amen? Amen. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Other lives are inevitably influenced and motivated to know God according to the time we've taken to know and understand Him. We are an influence. Yes, we are. Hallelujah. Amen. Colossians 1, chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of His will yes. in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being faithful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Amen? Amen. I want to ask all of us a very important question. Are we really more excited about what God does than about who He is? Are we really more excited about what God does than who He is? We, we, we have a generation that only seeks the gifts and rarely the giver. And I've been guilty. I'm not a accusing anyone else. I've been guilty. God, I want to seek your face. I want to know you. I want to be known of you. Amen? It's a sign of spiritual maturity when we're honestly more excited about having a greater re revelation of some aspect of God's character than in a display of His power. It is a sign of spiritual maturity when we're honestly more excited about having greater revelation of some aspect of God's character than in a display of His power. Hallelujah. Some personal thoughts. All my spiritual problems come from my lack of relationship with Jesus. All, in the assessment of my life, all of my spiritual problems come from my lack of relationship with Jesus. We will only make Jesus known effectively to the degree that we've taken time to know Him. We cannot convey what we don't know. Sometimes the letter killeth when the word is spoken without love. And without the Spirit and without the anointing, the letter can kill. But the Spirit maketh the life. A common cliche in our society is, it's not what you know. <laughs> it's who you know. And in this kingdom, it's more important who we know. Hallelujah. I want to lay aside everything tonight in my life yes. that I think I know about Jesus. All right. All right. I thank him for the revelations. I thank him for the enlightenment. But I want to lay it all aside. Yes. And I want to pursue yes. a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ in my life. Amen. Not only am I depending on that, but I have family yes. and I have others yes. that are depending on a deeper relationship yes. that I may know him yes. in the fullness that he wants me to know him. Yes. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Michael. Clap our hands to the Lord. Hallelujah. What an incredible call to us to know Jesus more and to make him known. I wonder if we could stand together tonight and let's ask the Lord together to help us in two ways. One is as an individual. This needs to be an individual journey. A lot of times, and we talked about this a little bit on Sunday, we need one another. Would you agree with that? We do. But this relationship thing, that really a lot of that has to be done on our own. I can't rely on Brother Richard to develop my relationship with God for me. I can, I can count on him to help me when I'm down, like he can count on me to help me to help him when he's down. But at the end of the day, our relationship with God is a one-on-one -on -one thing. So I want us to focus on two things. Number one is, is for God to help us with that relationship piece. 
And, and then that God would help us as a church corporately, together, as a body, one body. You understand the, Bi- the, the Bible refers to us as a body. So there is a singleness of heart. There is, there's, there's one body that's represented in this building across Facebook tonight. We are a body together. And I want to pray that, that God would help us as a body to grow in him and be ready to take it out. Can we do that? Would you lift your voice? Would you make it as powerful as you did earlier in prayer tonight? Lord, we're so thankful for your word tonight. Uh, thank you for convicting us, for pricking our heart and reminding us, Lord, that, that this is all about relationship and, and that we have work to do to develop that relationship and, and beyond that to, to share it with other people. God, I pray that you would help us as individuals and as a body of believers, as Landmark Church. I, I pray that you would help us, help, help make our greatest desire to know you. God, let our passion be to seek after you, to, to be after you, to be in pursuit of you. I pray in your name tonight as an individual and as a part of this body, God, don't let me be satisfied. Don't let me be satisfied with where I am. And don't let this church be satisfied with where we are and and what I've experienced and what we've experienced. But God, help us to be like the heart that pants after the water brook. And let all of our days be spent seeking after you, actively seeking after you, chasing you, pursuing you, always wanting to grow deeper in our relationship with you. Help us, Lord, I pray. Let our heart beat after you and you alone. There are so many things in this world today that distract us. There are so many things in this world today that turn our heads to the left and the right. There are so many reasons we can find in our life today, God, to just neglect the things of God, to neglect kingdom work, to neglect building that relationship. We've got so many things going on. God, I pray in your name, let our heart beat after you and you alone. God, help us to reprioritize you in our life. I believe with all of my heart, whatever we desire, whatever we're passionate about, we we will not be able to contain that to ourselves. I believe if it's our passion, if if you are our passion, if if you are what we're seeking after, we won't be able to keep it to ourselves, but we will have to share it. I believe if you're first in my life, I won't be able to help myself but to share it with with every person, with every person, every single opportunity I have. God, I pray that you would take us. Take us to the place where our desire to know you turns us to make you known. God, unfortunately today in this Christian walk, in this Christian world, in our Christian faith, unfortunately today you and a relationship with you is the best kept secret we have. I pray that you would help us, Lord, to push past comfortable, push past status quo, push push past where we've always been and doing what we've always done. Help us to push past that and create a desire to know you and to make you known. Create a desire in me to know you and to make you known create a desire in this church to know you and to make you known let it be at the forefront of our mind and our mission God let it be our vision every single day God when we wake up in the morning and our eyelids burst open and our feet hit the ground let the first thought we have be about you oh God how can we get more of you how can we know you in a deeper way and who in this day can we share you with in your name we pray in your name we pray Jesus in your name somebody shout to know Jesus and make him known shout it again to know Jesus and make him known would you say it one more time to know Jesus and to make him known God we praise you for your word tonight we thank you for your word tonight thank you for cutting us deep tonight Thank you for reminding us that we have a responsibility to grow in ourselves and our relationship with you, but also to share you to this world. Praise the name of the Lord. 
Praise the name of the Lord. You know, they did a study several years ago across all lines of businesses, and I can't remember where the resource was. It may have been the Harvard Business Review. But I read a statistic several years ago about the greatest salesman. And you understand the greatest salesman wasn't the one who knew the biggest words and wore the nicest suit. Now, sometimes they were, but that wasn't what defined them. And they, they Basically, when they boiled it down, the, the characteristic, the number one characteristic that determined the person who was the greatest salesman across all retail industries was the person who was the most passionate about their product. <laughs> they, they were so passionate that they knew it inside and out. They could tell you every single detail. They loved that product. It became a part of them. That was the best salesman. It wasn't the one that drove the fanciest car pastor. It wasn't the one that be, lived in the biggest home. It was the one that was the most passionate about their product. Imagine what we could do. Imagine what we could do if we took what we talk about us doing and actually did it. Imagine if we really grew ourselves in him and became so passionate about him and were so excited about him that we could not help but tell everybody about it. Amen. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I, I've told Brother Tad when we were talking after he got baptized, don't ever lose, didn't I? Don't lose this excitement. Don't ever let it go. Hallelujah. I'll embarrass her tonight because it's her birthday and I feel it's appropriate. But I remember, I remember when, when John got baptized and it, it, was, it was a step for her never have been raised and exposed into apostolic Pentecostal church. And uh, it, it was quite an experience and quite a move. And, and leading up to baptism, you understand it wasn't something that she did just to do, just because people had talked about it. She had, she had thought about it and prayed about it. And God began to convict her about it. And I'll never forget, we were in the process of redoing the sanctuary. And the sanctuary was all torn up. Uh, but the baptistry still worked. And, and after service in the gym, we all walked over to the sanctuary. And, and there she was baptized in Jesus' name. And it was, an, it was a glorious experience. But the greatest part of that experience was when we were on our way home. She was sitting next to me in the vehicle. Believe it or not, I did not make her ride in the back seat. She sat next to me. And we, we, were, right, we were driving home, and the, just this glow and this beam just, just coming out of her. And all of a sudden, she grabs my arm, and she goes, It's real. It's really real. When I came up, I was different. I was changed. This is real. There's a real power about this. I can't, I can't believe it. I, I know what you said, and I know what I heard, but it's real. Then she sent text messages and emails and all kinds of stuff to her coworkers and people that she knew about how real and powerful this experience is. Hey, let's don't lose that. Let's don't, let's don't let that leave us. Let's do what Pastor talked about tonight and continue to work towards our relationship with him and share it with everybody. Hallelujah. Pastor, you remember when they used to call us fanatics? <laughs> they used to call us fanatics. Hey, let's be fanatics again. Let's get wild and crazy and radical with God. It's God that we serve. It's worth it. Amen. He's better than any Facebook meme you will ever read. Amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Facebook, we love you so very much. God bless you. We will see you on Sunday. And somebody say amen.